This was Myanmar in February this year. And this is Myanmar right now. It's been more than four and a half months since the illegal takeover of the government by Myanmar's military. And not much has improved. Despite the United Nations and ASEAN's attempts at resolving the crisis, Myanmar is slowly turning into a failed state. The UN isn't all powerful. With 193 member states, its powers are actually quite limited by the virtue of sovereignty and other terms and conditions around. Firstly, let's talk about the Security Council. While resolutions from the Security Council are legally binding, not much has come out from the Council with regards to the crisis in Myanmar. The Council has the right to enact arms embargo or sanctions against the military leaders. Yet, China and Russia continue to support the military in Myanmar, and with both countries wielding the powers to veto any resolutions in the Council, any attempts to punish the military in Myanmar remains pointless. Next up, the United Nations General Assembly. Resolutions from the GA are legally binding. And what this essentially means is that countries are not required by law to follow the demands or clauses of the resolutions. Hence, many see these resolutions as a form of political statement. Yet, this has also been really slow, especially after ASEAN's call for the proposed resolution by Liechtenstein to drop any mention of suspending arms sales to Myanmar. Now, you might be wondering, why is ASEAN doing this? Shouldn't ASEAN be going out of its way to protect the people of Myanmar? Well, here's why. ASEAN was founded upon the need for dependence and solidarity in the region. During the difficult times of the 1960s, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, the Philippines, and Indonesia came together to form ASEAN to promote peace, development, and cooperation within the region. Yet, ASEAN was never about promoting or projecting a certain form of governance. Unlike the European Union, where all member states have to be democratic, there was never such a requirement for ASEAN. During its founding, Thailand and Indonesia were ruled by a military dictator, while the Philippines was ruled by a man who eventually became a dictator himself. ASEAN's inclusion of several models of government made it inclined towards non-interference and making compromises to accommodate each and every nation. This leaves us with the current situation. ASEAN has been leading the global effort in resolving the crisis in Myanmar. Despite calls for stricter actions against Myanmar's military leaders, ASEAN has instead chosen to engage the junta leaders in dialogues. This is in hopes that the junta leader will eventually have constructive dialogues with the civilian leaders of the country to resolve the crisis. Let's be clear about this. The inclination towards consensus and dialogues isn't wrong at all. Contrary to what many people think, the belief that compromise solves problems isn't naive or wrong. After all, this consensus building model has allowed for countries to focus on their individual development and not worry about interference or having to interfere in other countries. This has also allowed for countries with varying political ideologies and systems to work together. However, critics have continuously voiced their concerns over ASEAN's apparent inaction or slow progress in resolving the crisis in Myanmar. Following an ASEAN leaders meeting in April, a five-point consensus was reached. This was however watered down in hopes that the military leaders in Myanmar would actually implement them. This leaves the consensus lacking many important points, including the release of political prisoners, constructive dialogues remain the main weapon of choice, and a special envoy will be appointed to facilitate the dialogue eventually. Unsurprisingly, the Myanmar's junta leader will also have to be agreeable on the person chosen as a special envoy. After a recent visit by ASEAN Secretary General and Brunei's second foreign minister, this position remains vacant. At this point in time, Myanmar's military has not taken any action to de-escalate the violence or to implement the five-point consensus. And as for the proposed UN resolution mentioned at the start, ASEAN is hoping that by dropping any mention of the suspension of arms sales to Myanmar, a unanimous acceptance of the resolution will be reached. This is in hopes that this unanimous acceptance will pressure the military leaders in Myanmar to act. 
and ASEAN prefers this over any punishment against the military leaders. In an article by Human Rights Watch, Vidal Franco criticised the global response towards the crisis in Myanmar. He goes on further to state that because of ASEAN's preference for non-interference, ASEAN will never deliver on Myanmar. Critics have also pointed out the global community's failure to meet their responsibility to protect, which is a framework and a global political commitment made in 2005 to prevent war crimes, genocide, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity. Specifically, the third pillar of this framework states that if any state is manifestly failing in its protection responsibilities, other states should take collective action to protect the people. Hence, this is what we are seeing in Myanmar right now. People are still going out to protest. The military is still committing atrocities against the people. The country is still in chaos. Of course, foreign diplomacy is never easy. It's far too common for people to think that one can condemn another country's actions without any repercussions. It's naive to think that problems can be solved with a snap of a finger. Yet, as time passes, we continue to see the dire state that Myanmar is in. And it's not long before people start to wonder why are the world leaders taking so long to make conclusive decisions? According to experts, at the rate of things are going, and with the slow progress by the global community, Myanmar will eventually turn into a failed state, no different from Somalia, Syria or Yemen. And if this were to happen, I think it's really on the United Nations, ASEAN and us. Because we couldn't help them, we still could.